Hi. I will now uh, briefly explain to you the relativistic uh, Doppler effect and uh, redshift gravity uh, gravity gravitational I mean uh, uh, redshift a uh, cosmological redshift etc all right um, in a sense I had done a previous video on, on non-relativistic uh, Doppler effect. In a sense, relativistic Doppler effect is easier than non-relativistic uh, Doppler effect, in some sense. Um, let me show you what's going on here. So we have this uh, this world runner here. We have this other world runner here. This, I mean. And then you have these two world lines right here, which they're world line. The the two and I that look parallel there that go across like that. These, those, and these right here. Those are uh, the world line of photons, but they may be substituted with you know the world line of other signals. Perhaps maybe some time like world lines etc if you want to consider you know some type of uh, slower than light uh, signals but in any case what we have is this that each one of these uh, things is the path of a photon and and uh, they're they're sort of hitting each one of these guys periodically right that's why I drew two only because afterwards you know the, the story is just supposed to repeat and repeat uh, but anyways so these two photons hit these two guys periodically and each guy will you know will assign it a different period right all right so now let's talk in in the case where we're in flat space and these observers are our inertial observers etc right so at the end of the day you have let's say and you you may uh, call one the emitter the other one the receiver but you know this is a little bit uh because also you might just think like this right that these these uh photons that that uh, are somehow to to be seen in this case as a, as a wave right those uh, world lines or histories of photons that they just happen to be in space and that these two just happen to be two different guys that happen to be describing the, the situation so you know one may not really be the emitter one may not really be emitting them he may just happen to be you know be there uh, make contact with those photons and then the other guy happens to also make contact with the photons and we're just comparing the the relative period let's say given that that uh, that this guy experiences this signal you know uniformly so so at this point a photon crosses him at this other point another photon crosses him at this other point another photon crosses them you know in a regular way and then this guy the same story right the photon that crosses this guy he hits you know he senses it here right then the, here he senses it right and I guess in in a way they are um, they are emitter and receiver also in, in the time sense right in the sense that this guy experiences this at a time before this guy experiences it so in a sense you know this guy is, is an emitter and that guy's a receiver, right? So in that sense, I guess, you know, maybe the, the term receiver, emitter could be applied, etc. But anyways, so so what's the deal here, right? Well, at the end of the day, all that happens is that. I mean, this guy, you know, photons cross him at this time. Later on, the same uh, photons cross the, the other guy, right? And what you want to do is compare basically the periods, right? Find you know the the time distance between these two, where these two photons hit, right? Where they could be seen as as the time of you know where where uh, where crests of a wave hit, right? And you want to compare it to the time this guy sees here, you know when the crests hit him. So what do you got to do? Well since you are in flat space and these guys are you know are inertial so they're basically represented by lines etc etc you can just grab this line and parallelly transport it you know over here right at this point okay that's this dotted line right here 
that's just this one moved over you know in a parallel fashion over here all right and then right here where this guy sees the two wave crests right and now the copy of the other guy here seeing the two wave crests right we could represent that just by this diagram right here so the, this first guy here is just this and you know this is the right here where the where the he sees the first uh, photon this right here right is where he sees the second photon and then the other guy this guy here that got moved over to here that's just that right and now your task basically becomes how do I compare the length of this vector to the length of this one and those would be you know the the, the two periods right the emitters uh, period and the, the receivers period okay now <clears throat> were we to to try and do this a uh, I mean there's various ways to do this right there's sort of like intuitively like you know space uh, in time you know x t axis ways to do it right or one could abstractly just look at these vectors right here like this right you have this vector u this vector uh, w right you have this uh, light like vector l right here then you say that you know u plus l is w right and you could use various uh, relationships for example I could I could find the uh, um, another vector z where where u uh, is perpendicular to z and then I express w in terms of u and z and from that I get this quantity uh, v the scalar which is the velocity okay uh, that that uh, that u as basically the observer uh, u ascribes to w and then you know find the uh, algebraic relationships and 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 they would relate me the length of u to the length of w and that that would be the the relationship between the two perceived periods which you would call the doppler shift okay so this again was in flat space right and we can move things over from over here from this line right here to the parallel line this dotted line right here and you know um, and deduce things like that right then there's this other thing and this would be either uh, you could call it Doppler shift or you could call it red shift right because you know the, the frequency of light uh, shifts and we had it easier just by finding a, a difference in, in the, the periods or by shifting meaning really the difference between one guy's uh, perception of the period and the other guy's perception of the period now uh, there's this issue in curved space etc right of what they call a um, relativistic uh, Doppler shift or relativistic redshift and blah 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 and, and uh, gravitational redshift or cosmological redshift right so let's examine that a little bit all right let's say we have something like this where this is like one of these uh, expanding universe models perhaps Einstein the sitter or something like that right okay there this model has this sideways uh, shift symmetry which I try to draw an arrow up here but but uh, the arrow didn't come out too well here in the picture okay but there's this arrow in this direction right in the horizontal direction in which if you move things over that way it's a symmetry okay so so meaning that this line right here is the path of a photon and this other line right here is also the path of a photon right so then you have these two guys let's say these are two horizontal guys which is typically the case in that example and those are the observers so those are the ones that are going to measure the redshift so in other words between here and here this guy will measure you know the length of that vector right and then between here and here the other guy will measure the, the length of that vector and th there'll be you know a difference between them and that's the redshift okay uh, this would be, I guess, if you wanted to give it a name, cosmological redshift, right? Okay, or but in reality, it's just, you know, it's just a redshift due to the fact that uh, space-time is curved. All right, that we'll later, you know, try to uh, classify some more. All right, so here you have, let's say, this is the the Schwarzschild uh, black hole geometry, okay? which is you know a black hole or a, just any gravitational body on the outside has that geometry right 
and this one now has a a vertical okay a vertical shift symmetry right so since this one's got the vertical shift symmetry if you have a, a the a path of a photon right here right and you just shift it up this other uh, the same thing but you know the same guy just moved over up that will also be the path of a photon right and then now if you have a again there you know typically you have these guys that are that are at a fixed distance from the black hole as observers so that's these two things right these vertical uh, lines and you want to know uh, what, what basically what the 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 change in period is from one guy to the other right here's the the two photons are emitted or or you know or a, a, just a, a sequence of photons pop 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 at regular intervals right and then this guy will receive them at regular intervals of his but our, the question is how does you know this interval here differ from this one right which of course will result in a shift in frequency etc now um it turns out right that since the shift here is upward right the actual visual distance like from here to here and from here to here right in in, in us drawing the diagram okay that distance is the same right because is the thing shifted up that's what shifted up means all right but in the geometry in the Lorentz geometry you know this distance right and this vector as a vector may actually be a lot shorter than this one okay or you know the the opposite right you would have to check in the geometry how long this vector is and then you know compare it to how long this vector from here to here is all right uh, here a similar thing happened but now since the shift is sideways what so you have is this and you shift it sideways right and here it happens this geometry is such that that the actual visual like vertical length is the actual uh, uh, length of the geometry right so then how these two lengths how the length from here to here and, and the little segment and the length from here to here compare that would be the, the actual shift in, in frequency and as you can see when something you know is sloped like this and then it changes slope like that it turns out that, that these are going to be longer than that just you know in the in Euclidean geometry which a in this case you can use because you know the way the symmetry is and everything else so let's see a, an example of that I drew it down here so again the two horizontal distances here are the same so I have here two horizontal distances that are the same right but since then this line is more sloped up than this one then this piece right here this vertical piece is bigger than that vertical piece okay so at least in this model visually you can see you know what the how the shift is going to be then you know as you go further out right it's gonna it's gonna basically uh redshift because the you know if, if you consider this guy the emitter and this guy the receiver again by you know just the way that uh, time is going in the situation what goes before what then then you can tell that that uh, this guy's going to receive the signal at a bigger period okay so bigger time between crests all right um, here I was just trying to do a let me go down here a little bit this is just a drawing of just say a world lines you know of these uh, crests or, or or rather yeah I, I guess you can say that world lines of crest or you know or, or those are world lines where at times where the concentration let's say of the, of the particles that are making the wave would be high and then you just have you know this is the, just the general case you know in curved space and then you have these two uh, guys that happen to be you know flying by there and then this guy would measure you know that the time between here and here the time between here and here and here and there right and if it happens to to be all you know crazy one bigger than the other one bigger than the next etc right then then you know you couldn't ascribe any kind of uh, coherency to the thing same thing for the other guy but if for example this guy happens to see them all you know at, at equal time intervals right then you could say oh you know this is a signal being emitted at this frequency right and then you would want to a ask uh, how the other guy receives it and perhaps the other guy that's receiving it he may also get it at regular intervals just maybe longer or shorter you know so the period for him may be longer or shorter or he may even though this guy emitted them 
at um, a regular intervals, this guy may happen to receive them, you know, at, at a crazy interval, not non regular intervals. This may be longer than this, and that may be, you know, shorter than that. So, so he would, uh, you know. But if you knew the geometry and you knew that this guy was emitting at regular intervals, perhaps he would be able to tell certain information, you know, knowing that and knowing how he, uh, the frequency that he receives it at. But okay, and and uh, one last thing is this. Now, um, the comparison between this, let's say, like some people make the distinction between a relativistic Doppler effect and, let's say, uh, you know, gravitational uh, Doppler effect, to, to use the term, or, or, you know, cosmological Doppler effect, right? Gravitational will be this one, let's say, cosmological will be that one, right? But let's see the difference. The difference is that in the typical relativistic Doppler effect, right, you're in flat space, so you're over here, okay? And you can move this guy right to this point and compare the two, right? And compare the two the two frequencies like that. Okay? Now here, right, if a guy, you know, first of all, there's no easy way to compare this guy to this guy. Okay? So that's one thing. So you can't compare them like that, right? You know, same same story there. Because the space is curved. Okay? So, so in that sense, you know, it's it's a little bit different. Now, one thing you could do is this too. You no longer have the, the concept of comparing a guys like that, but you can have another guy here, maybe a, another time like curve going like this at some kind of a odd angle here, right? And then you can see how his frequency changes with, res with respect to the frequency that this guy was seeing, okay? And that would be more akin to how we did this here, like like we moved this from here to here. Uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah, how we moved this from here to here. Okay, from here, move them over here. So basically, because in here this is flat space and there's parallelism, and we can compare things, you know, distant things by moving them first to the point and and comparing them. Okay. So here, what, what people normally call in these situations uh, a relativistic Doppler is where you have at the same point, you have another observer uh, passing by there and how he would see the signal. The problem is, again, that since space is curved there, right, that observer, I mean, for example, here, this guy happens to be a geodesic, but that other observer, you might take him to be a, a, another geodesic, let's say, and, and find out, you know, how he sees, sees the signal, but maybe he doesn't even see the signal uh, at regular intervals. So it's kind of hard to ascribe really a, a redshift there, right? We don't know that. And for example, this one, these two observers that you're, that you're comparing, those uh, vertical lines, they're not even geodesic, they're accelerated uh, observers. So there you, you're comparing the, the, the redshift between two really accelerated observers. Right. So hopefully this will give you a, a certain idea of how this whole thing uh, fits together. And also I would like to do another video where I compute this for you in the in the flat uh, case. So I would like to do in the in the flat case with just uh, vector methods a compute the, the relativistic redshift. All right. Hope you learned something.